they can target these specific nodes and disrupt the entire network. Um, so eventually, uh, it's hard to understand these, this data. Uh, there's limited methods. There's basic methods like graphs, visualization, but how, how can we explore more complicated things like spatial, if, it's, if the data is time varying. And sometimes even the methods become so hard that we need some techniques to understand the, these methods. Uh, so one approach is doing visualization. Why do we do visualization? This is something called as Anscombe Quartet. Uh, you have four graphs that have the same statistics, that show the same information, <laughs> but when you visualize it, you can see the difference in patterns. So one of, one of the key aspects to visualize the data. And here's where some of my research questions address. Uh, so these are some of my contributions, uh, specifically focused on graph-based methods and deep learning transparency. And for this one, I focus on deep learning mm -hmm. transparency. Um, so deep learning, why is this useful? This is one of the most popular algorithms, specifically in search, Google, uh, search engines like Google, Facebook, Yahoo. Uh, most, most of the popular methods uh, use deep learning. And this is typically very hard to understand. It has a combination of neurons, connections, trunk functions. Um, so this example, given, an, given a question and an image, it tells you what image it is. It gives an answer to the given question. So as simple as this requires so much computation, so much, uh, so, there's so many things underlying uh, that's happening in the background. Um, so there's a lot of challenges in understanding these methods. Uh, these are very complex. Uh, there is very limited rationale into why we pick a model, why we pick linear regression versus mm -hmm. random forest why you pick deep learning versus some other method. And the, the data is just huge, but it's large. How do we combine all of these methods and then come up with sort of one rationale into developing how we can use this data? Uh, one, so this was one project, but there are several projects when I was at Adobe uh, where I focus on uh, sort of visualizing the entire flow of uh, deep learning methods. So, and the bottom panel, you can, this is a simple task, a simple classification task. Um, given a sentence, is it positive or negative? Um, there's a model that has, that predicts, that classifies if it's positive or negative. As simple as this produces so much more information. So on the right, you can sort of see a tree map. You can see uh, for positive sentences, which model do you pick? Given two deep learning models, which model do you pick? And so, sort of you can see the underlying, once you have what is the input and the output, you just want to know what's happening inside the model. And so that's where at the bottom of the panel you can sort of see how, how the neurons are activated from A to B. So why is this useful? This is useful to understand three things. Um, how, what are, what are false positives? Why do false positives matter? So in this case, a simple case like, uh, for example, sentence classification one can identify things that are positive are being misclassified as negative, and things that are negative can be misclassified as positive. And in a real production setting, where an entire company is, relies on the results of this data, what effect does it have? Is it, how much dollar amount is it associated with it? And sort of such methods sort of give more insight into what's going on. Um, so, this is primarily some of the things, some, some of the things that are going on, and uh, yes. So, one of, one of the projects is to make machine learning more accessible, more interactive, visual interactive being the key. How can we better compare models? How can we actually transfer such methods in a real production setting? Um, so those, 